All right, everybody hear me okay? Good evening. Uh, welcome to our College Information Night for 2019, uh, one of our annual events. We're really excited to do this. I know uh, Miss Amanda Bates and myself, uh, John Westra, the director of the Counseling Center, we're really excited to, uh, to be here tonight every year. Uh, one of the things that we look forward to um, each fall, uh, that, uh, that application and college uh, feeling, that season is really just a, a great time and a fun time for all of us as counselors. Um, maybe a little stressful uh, for parents and students, but we uh, really enjoy that process and, and we want to be able to share information with you uh, to hopefully make it a little bit more manageable. Um, some logistics and things as we get going, feel free to get up and move as you need to. Restrooms are located just out here um, in that commons area. Uh, the men's restroom is down here on this end. The women's restroom is down by the, uh, by the entrance, by door seat entrance. Uh, so feel free to do that as you need to. Um, and then um, we'll, uh, again, kind of move through this as, as quick as we can, trying to be mindful of your time. I know you got, uh, everyone is busy and there's and schedules, and we want to uh, try to keep that in mind as we work through the evening, uh, but also try to give you as much information as possible. So real quick, I just want to, uh, you know, give you some information about our staff. Um, obviously, I've mentioned uh, Miss Amanda Bates, one of our counselors in the uh, 10th through 12th grade alpha split, um, but you can see there listed um, all of our counselors in general. So we have two freshman counselors, um, Mrs. Watkins and Mrs. Cronk. They handle all the ninth grade, kind of splitting that uh, down the middle. Um, we're excited to kind of uh, transition to uh, some new programming with some SEL counselors. So SEL is social emotional learning. Um, and we've been able to designate some staff to, to really focus in on that, um, you know, focus in on supporting students with, with groups and some uh, proactive programming um, that we really uh, think is going to benefit our student body as a whole. Um, you can see the rest of our 10th through 12 counselors, Mrs. Strafford, uh, Mrs. Hunter, Mr. Varga, Ms. Bates, uh, Mrs. Reynolds, who took uh, Mrs. Bidegary's spot in that alphabet, um, and then Ms. Fitzgerald. So uh, a great, uh, hard-working group. Um, again, there's a couple of us here tonight, but they're, you know, they're always an email away, a phone call away, um, and really want to support your students through this college application process. So this evening is going to be relatively similar in content to what we've seen from year to year. Uh, you know, the things that we talk about in the college application process, it hasn't evolved too much over time. Um, so a lot of the things that we're going to talk about are, you know, they're, we're familiar, things that we're, that we're used to seeing. But what you're going to see tonight, though, is a little bit different and change in format. Rather than hearing from us uh, for much of the evening, as much as I like to talk, Ms. Bates, you know, um, I don't want to sit here and do that all night. Uh, and so instead, we've got some, uh, some guests here tonight, some panel members um, who are actually on the other side. They're on the post-secondary side of things uh, in the college world. Um, and they can really provide some, some detailed information for you from that side of things. So, again, it's not just hearing from the high school side. You can hear from both sides. And so we thought that would be a nice thing uh, to really mix up our program, uh, but also give you some, uh, some really relevant information. Um, the last thing I've noted here, we ask that you so write down your questions, take some notes. Um, if you uh, received an email recently, I, I was kind of uh, requesting you send some questions in advance. And so we've got a good list of questions. Uh, some topics and things that we're going to have our panel discuss. So we think that we're going to do a really good job in trying to, to manage all your questions in, in that way. But certainly as you have questions, jot them down on the handouts you have. Um, if you want to give them back to us, we'll have a volunteer with some note cards. You can kind of flag her down. Um, and then we'll try to address those um, either individually. Uh, if we have some time, maybe we can take a few uh, from the audience at the end. But again, uh, thank you for your, your feedback and questions. I think we've got a pretty good a pretty good idea where we want to direct some of our conversation. So the first thing that I'm going to do here tonight, uh, just a quick review of, of what our students are doing and, and what it looks like at Penn High School. So you can see uh, those, those post-secondary options um, that our students are going to, uh, whether it's that four-year traditional college experience, uh, it's a two-year experience where they're starting out at a community college and transferring, or they're getting some type of a, a technical certificate of some, of some kind. Uh, we have students who are uh, working into an, an apprenticeship, uh, going directly into the workforce, uh, and then we have a population that are also working and um, enlisting in the military. So we have uh, you know, many number of things, many number of paths that our students are following from year to year, um, and really it's just a, again, it's a great thing, it's, it's a fun thing for counselors to see all those things. Just a quick snapshot, uh, generally speaking from year to year, what our, what our seniors are doing. Uh, a really good chunk of those students are going to that four-year that four um, college. It, it ranges, uh, again, I've listed a range because it, it falls within that general, uh, that general percentage for the most part from year to year. Um, so about 70 to 80 percent 
um, you know, again, on the high end and low end, uh, are going to go to that four-year institution. About 10 to 15, roughly, are going to go uh, into a two-year college experience with, again, varying plans. Uh, and then the rest of our students are, are moving into the workforce, military, you know, what have you that way, uh, and kind of moving on into whatever post-secondary plans they have. Uh, Ms. Bates is going to walk you through the timeline with regard to college admission um, and, and focus on a lot of those processes that are going to come your way. Again, thank you. Um, I'm not as tall as Westra, so let me bring this mic now. <laughs> um, thank you guys for coming out. And so we have um, a little bit of difference from what we are traditionally doing, but this is just some key points of what you should be doing um, and what your students should be doing. And so freshman year is often um, engaging in the high school experience. Um, and so what that means is, so your student is coming from middle school, total transition. And so we encourage your student to join into clubs, organizations, maybe they're into sports, but continue to do that, volunteer experiences. Um, we often encourage them to self-evaluate freshman year. So this is looking at career interests, maybe goals, directed elective choices, achievement academies. And so as you know, we are, all our classes are designed in an achievement academy, such as the Fine Arts Department, the CPA, where we are right now. Um, oftentimes, taking the rigorous classes, so deciding if you are going for the Core 40, Core 40 with academic honors, Core 40 with technical honors. So just working hard through those rigorous courses. Sophomore year, all students are taking the PSAT. And so this is just kind of like a snapshot of where your student is. So it's the preliminary SAT. And so it just gives the idea of, okay, junior year, when you can get into AP classes, what does those AP classes really look like? Um, continue to taking relevant and rigorous courses. Again, we can't stress enough on extracurricular involvement reflecting on the career and major that they may be interested in. This is the time where you need to be looking at online searches. So triptocollege.org is often a site that is really used often for us. Um, and then of course College Board, which is the site that you can also sign up for the SAT. Junior year, so this is also another year where students take the PSAT, but this time the PSAT Getting in and out, okay. <laughs> um, the PSAT is at that point for national merit consideration. And so these are the scores that are considered for national merit. Also junior year, you're doing college visits. You're creating a workable list of potential colleges or universities. You're looking at small, large, out of state, in state, what exactly fits for your child. Again, taking on that rigorous coursework, considering dual credit, AP, ACP, which is Advanced College Project, AP, Advanced Placement. And again, seeking out extracurricular involvement and then doing positions of leadership ultimately. Taking the ACT and SAT, so one um, good thing that we have here is that in the spring of your junior year, students have the opportunity to take the SAT. And that's normally around March, and so they sign up through us, so it's a different process if you were to take the national test date SAT. Um, and so that's an option just for juniors. Again, this is a good opportunity to start scholarship searching and so forth, and looking at financial aid. If you are, obviously we look at your um, transcript, you know, you're not gonna get off easily. Uh, so we look at the GPA, that sort of thing, but we know these things don't define the student. We try to like look at it from a holistic standpoint. Uh, is this person more likely to succeed in college? Because we, what we ultimately want to do is set you up for success in college. Good evening. <clears throat> and I'm Rosalind Ellis, as I was introduced earlier, and I'm representing Bethel University, and uh, I agree that there are pretty much the same kinds of things that we are looking at as we um, uh, take a look at students that are coming to Bethel University. 
Uh, I think that there's, um, certainly we look at transcripts, certainly we look at the test scores, uh, GPA, but we also bring students, every student that attends Bethel University, we bring them on campus for a tour so they know what the, what the school is all about and have a chance to take a look at the school. We also bring them in for an interview and we interview every single student uh, and get a feel. Um, again, uh, we can look at them on paper, but we also wanna take a look and, and speak with them and talk with them and get to know them a little bit, a little bit better. Bethel University is a Christian school, so we do want to know where they stand and how they feel about attending a, a Christian university, although that's, that's not the absolute requirement, but we certainly want to make sure that they understand that. I am here this evening uh, to talk a little bit about uh, a program inside Bethel University called the Field Scholar Program, and I'm just going to touch on it just uh, shortly. I, uh, have some, I had some papers, and I think they may still be a few out on the Table, if you are interested in looking at a low cost or no cost option for your child to attend a four year university, Bethel has a wonderful program. We have some people in the community that have, have offered the opportunity uh, to provide some dollars to Bethel University, but what, what they said was, we don't want to build buildings, we want to educate students. So if you can find students um, that are wanting to come to Bethel University, we can provide them a no debt or a very low cost option in order to attend. Bethel has over 50 majors um, uh, that, you, that, that your child can participate in and get um, their degree in. And so I um, just tell you to take a look at the university. A lot of uh, students say, my child was one of them. I don't wanna stay home and go to school. I wanna go away to college. But certainly when you look at the cost of college nowadays, one of the huge things that are out there in the media are, is the amount of debt that our students are leaving college with, tens of thousands of dollars uh, in loans that they're leaving school with. And we are uh, able to offer an opportunity for your child to receive a bachelor's degree, graduate after four years with no debt at all. So take a look at us. I certainly uh, put that program out there for you. Hi, I'm John. I'm with Ivy Tech, and we are a little bit different at Ivy Tech because we're Indiana's uh, statewide community college system. So we are designed to be an open access college system. Uh, so test scores don't necessarily determine admission at Ivy Tech, but they do determine uh, your placement within the college level coursework. So it would determine how far within the coursework you can start your college journey uh, versus whether you are admitted or not, if that makes sense. And real quick, follow up, and I know Ms. Bates, you have some questions. I want to just ask, Ali, you mentioned a great point. Talk to us, if you can, again, anybody uh, here tonight, uh, when you look at some of the, the items that you mentioned, like the extracurricular activities, um, service, you know, how, do, how does somebody stand out? Uh, an applicant, how does an applicant stand out, um, and, and how much value do you place on some of those, um, you know, some of those other items beyond, you know, like, again, the transcript, test scores, uh, like the, you know, the essays, the letters of rec, you know, how do you value those things and weigh those in the application process? Sure, uh, that's a great question. Um, I think one of the things that, uh, this is a, an IU-wide system thing that uh, we kind of uh, try to, you know, uh, not just promise, but also just kind of have been like really proposed in the past is that we are trying to promote diversity within our communities, which starts within our region, and that, that's an IU mission. So whether you go to any of the seven IU campuses, that is something really is, is invaded within like that kind of core foundation of each campus. For our campus, it, we look at the students and what they bring to the table because we recognize this community we live in here is diverse. We have people coming from all over the world, right? We have people that come in from different backgrounds, different uh, kind of socioeconomic status, that sort of thing. So your application tells us about the person that you are, even you know what you know linguistically, what language you speak, that sort of thing. Or you know, if not that, it's also what sport you know you're participating in, that sort of thing. That says a lot about that person, you know, uh, to just enhance like the clubs or the organization that exists within our kind of campus, that sort of thing. Uh, we have a, a number of campus organizations that have been developed over the years, and we'd like to see that uh, continue because uh, the truth of the matter is it's part of like the student kind of engagement and success is to 
to be able to participate in these kind of things, and we look at how does, how does each student add to that kind of uh, mission. Another one off the college. What are the differences in deadline? So early, for example, early versus regular or binding versus non binding. I'll start since I have the microphone. Uh, but again, Ivy Tech is an open access community college system. So uh, we have an open application, which means you can apply anytime at Ivy Tech, uh, essentially almost up until classes start for us. So uh, in that way, again, it's, it's made to be accessible for anybody that wants to start that college journey, uh, regardless of where they're starting from. So it's fairly straightforward for us. Um, I'll go ahead and add something to that, because I get this question a lot. And I do do some work with students on their college applications. Um, so part of that doing your homework thing in terms of listing out those schools, one of those columns that I make students write besides, you know, what, what are their goals shooting for, GPA, test score, do they super score, et cetera. One of those is what's the deadline and what does that mean? So for parents out there, especially those that have students that tend to procrastinate, which is probably what, you know, 98% of you, um, is... November 1st is a big one. For a lot of schools that offer scholarship money, um, there's a November 1st deadline for a lot of those. So especially that applies to some really big state schools. It's kind of the way, it's kind of the first category that I put those in. So a place like Purdue or IU or Michigan State, a lot of those schools, if you want to be considered for scholarship money, you have to have your application in by November 1st. And a lot of those schools are on rolling admissions which means as soon as that August 1st application comes out, you can start to apply. Sure, you could apply December 15th, and, but you would no longer be, and I'm just using that as an arbitrary date, you would no longer be considered for any scholarship money. So some of those automatic thresholds that you might hit that I was mentioning earlier, you have to have your application in by November 1st for some of those schools. Now, other schools... Will, that aren't on these rolling admissions, so maybe not these big state school universities. So for example, our neighbor down the street, Notre Dame, or a big state school like Michigan, they might have two, two separate deadlines. One's gonna be an early action deadline, which is usually also November 1st, as it turns out. And the other one's usually January 1st for a lot of schools. Um, and it's important to do your homework for each individual school because each one of them treat that differently. And maybe, uh, Mr. Wester can speak more to this or one of the other panelists, but there's a delineation between early action and early decision, so you got to be careful about that. And sometimes schools even themselves call it the wrong thing. If, or nobody actually agrees on the terms 100%, but most of the time early action is, hey, you have the ability to, to apply early and we'll let you know by Christmas if you get in. It's not binding. You're free to apply to other schools early as well. Um, but we're not going to hold you to it. For schools that use early decision, and hopefully I'm using these terms right, um, for s some schools will do an early decision option where they say, hey, we want you to apply by November 1st, and it's you dedicating yourself to us, essentially. It's you saying as a student, you are my first choice. I will accept a yes if you give me a yes, and I will rescind all of my other applications, essentially, or I will not apply anywhere else early. And again, do your homework. Don't just take what I said about that. It's important to, to figure out how does Northwestern do it compared to how does Michigan do it compared to how Notre Dame does it. Or all of these schools do it a little bit differently. But I know November 1st is a really important day for you to keep in mind, whether it's for scholarship money or if you want to do something in the early category. I, I agree. Uh, November 1st is, is a good working day uh, to go with. Um, and I think that the important thing is to try to, is to apply early, as early as you can. And as soon as uh, the information that you begin to get back from the FAFSA, from um, the SAT test that you take or ACT, as soon as you begin to get that information back, you can add it to your application. But um, you don't necessarily have to wait until you have that information. You can go ahead and begin uh, applying, put your application in, and begin putting that information in. Uh, as it comes forward. The sooner the better, definitely, especially if you're looking at financial aid and scholarships. 
Um, I think I could have not agreed anymore. Um, I think same thing, deadlines are very important uh, with scholarship, that sort of thing. The only thing that I wanted to add, uh, like kind of to this is, it's specific to us or our campus is that we do something called on-sites. So that's when we, as a, you know, admissions team, we come to your high school. Like actually uh, Penn High School happened to be like uh, one of the schools that I go. So I will be in the school and meeting with the seniors. Uh, so on, on-site is, we require the students to have like, you know, have completed an application, they have their transcript and they have a test score ready, then I am able to actually evaluate everything and try to make a decision on the spot. Additionally, we kind of tend to waive the application fee and we do uh, what we call like uh, kind of on-site scholarships. These are very limited, right? I, we don't do them all year round, kind of go to the high schools, but we know like part of being admissions on the road is to go to the high schools and we, we look at like, top feeder schools, which are like schools uh, within our region that we visit and kind of work with the students that we have. So uh, talk to your guidance uh, counselors, that sort of thing. You will hear more uh, information about that sort of thing. Uh, I think uh, this is kind of like a standard at this point. It's a lot of schools that kind of offer that. Um, what do you suggest start when are taking college and what should they be looking for so college visit let's pass mm. this down here. yeah here we go we'll go ahead we'll we'll, we'll repeat that so we're uh, get, looking at that college visit process really wanting to uh, panelists give us an idea uh, when visits should um, occur you know I think we have a general idea but what what kind of visits and what should students be looking for uh, when they actually are visiting? What kind of things should, should they be looking for in the campus, uh, in, their, in their degrees? What kind of things do you think would be good for them? Um, Bethel University has um, what they call pilot days and you can actually go online and uh, sign up there. They'll have a list of the days every single month. There's a list of, list of days that you can come on campus and the admissions office will actually take you on a full tour of the college. Um, and you'll, you'll actually go to classrooms, sit in, you'll actually go to chapel and sit in and see what that's like. You'll have an opportunity to see the various um, offerings that the college has. And so there, um, that's a, one of the best ways, I think, uh, to get an introduction to Bethel University. Uh, and they are ongoing. They are, we're, they're throughout the summer, fall, spring. And so um, I would encourage you, if you're interested in Bethel, uh, one of the first things you should do is to look on the um, uh, website and uh, come and take a look at their pilot days because that's a, a good opportunity to visit the college. And they, again, it's never too soon. Uh, similarly, like Bethel University, we have the same thing. Uh, we call it different things, obviously. Uh, showcase days, and you can come in and just we'll show you our campus and we'll tell you always what we're all about. You know, um, uh, we have like set three days a week, uh, Tuesdays, uh, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays for like open kind of standard tours uh, for the entire year. We additionally do like appointments if you wanted to meet up with a counselor, you know, you set an appointment, you know, whatever works for you, can, that sort of thing, we kind of work with you. Uh, the one thing that I would like to add is, I think, uh, and just kind of add like emphasis on is that is, College is a big investment. Think about it. Uh, I, I don't like kind of like the compression, but I think about it is this because my father was a big on the car, car thing. So think about it as purchasing a vehicle. You do a lot of research before you kind of invest your money in a car. So think about college the same way because you're looking for what's like a perfect fit for yourself. So you want to visit as many colleges as you, you can. Um, so like think about it that way is when you look into and the question was asked is when you kind of look into like a college campus what should I look for uh, on a visit that sort of thing I would say one of the things uh, you get to understand what you're looking for and know yourself very well so what do I mean by that as an 18 year old who went to college I, I realized that a big campus like IU Bloomington for instance was not for me I got lost there you know, so these are some of the things that you want to like, kind of, you know, think about right now. Um, obviously, it's a it's a place for you to go, kind of push your limits and kind of grow as an individual, that sort of thing. But also know what, how far you want to go. You know, 
Do you like like the really big campus life? Do you like the small school where like the professor will call you by name? You know, they'll know you by name, that sort of thing. If you're not in class, they will notice, that sort of thing. Or do you like, you know, somewhere in between where it's not too big, it's not too small? Uh, also looking at the finances, all of that kind of stuff kind of matters when you look, you know, go on a college visit. Um, and ask a lot of questions. I don't think uh, you can ask like too many questions. I, I would also, before I pass the mic, yeah. I would also recommend that you get on the web at any of these colleges and really take a good look. Um, I know at Bethel University, they, they, their website is wonderful and it gives you tons of information about the school, class sizes, offerings, and, and those kind of things. And I'm sure it's true with IU as well. So I would advise you to, to start there. I was going to say, similarly, that, that's a great way to get some of the general questions out of the way, and then you can prepare more specific questions. So when you go to campus, uh, do your research and get some specific questions in mind. And I would encourage you, uh, don't just speak with admissions folks or counselors if you can, uh, schedule a meeting with a student on campus, whether it's somebody that you know that's there uh, or a lot of admissions departments can set you up with a student mentor or somebody so you can ask questions from a student perspective to really understand what campus life looks like. Uh, similarly, if you're interested in a particular program, see if you could set up a meeting with uh, a program or department chair or an instructor or professor somewhere so you can get those kind of meatier questions answered rather than the big general overview. So, um, and do get some variety in there. Like Ali said, it's, it's good to try them on. Uh, if you're like me, your first college visit, you're like, this is amazing. I'm going to this place. This is fantastic. Uh, and then you get a few more in and you start being able to compare those a little more accurately and see what's the best fit for you. So uh, definitely visit as many as you can that are within your interest. That way you have a good comparison. Awesome. I appreciate the responses there. Um, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit. and I'm going to throw this back to Jonathan. Um, I think here at Penn High School, one thing that uh, we're very fortunate to offer is a significant amount of dual credit classes, uh, whether it's through Ivy Tech, through, its, uh, through the ACP program in IU, and then a significant uh, amount of AP uh, coursework as well. So uh, a lot of time, you know, we have students leaving here, uh, early, you know, early college students are leaving with an associate's degree, but we have other students who are, you know, they're leaving with, with 30 credits, uh, 30 college credits, ready to take those, um, you know, to their college campus um, as they matriculate to college that next year. So we get a lot of questions as to, um, you know, how, how do credits transfer? You know, what is, what is a dual credit uh, class? How does that transfer? Um, you know, how does an AP course, how does that show up at the college you're going to? If you would, Jonathan, since I know you work closely with uh, early college in general and Ivy Tech, that there's so many programs that, that dual credit, when they transfer that, give us some insight there. What does that look like? Sure, I'd be happy to. So uh, Penn's early college program is pretty robust. Uh, there's a couple of levels of dual credit that students can earn. Most of those are focused on general education requirements. Uh, so they are coursework that will transfer anywhere within the state of Indiana, uh, within the state college system, essentially. So most of the credits also transfer out of state and to private institutions as well. Um, a couple of the big benchmarks that are very helpful in the state of Indiana, uh, the legislator has created what's called the Statewide General Education Transfer Corps. Uh, it's the STGEC, which is kind of a clunky acronym, but essentially it's a core set of general education requirements. Uh, you could find it at the website's transferin.org, uh, and there's a core transfer library. And essentially, if you earn any of those credits at any state institution, they will transfer to other state institutions within Indiana. Uh, if you complete 30 credits within a select amount of those requirements, they will automatically transfer as a block of credits. So through dual credit here at Penn High School, it's helpful because those credits transfer uh, as a block. So you can take those right to IU or Purdue. Um, if you earn that STGEC, that fulfills your freshman year general education requirements. So in most cases, student can enter in as a sophomore status uh, within the college environment, which is helpful. It gives you some perks at times, like preferential uh, status when it comes to dorm selection, um, preferential parking, some of those nice uh, perks of being a sophomore status. And then some folks do earn the associate's degree at Penn High School, which transfers directly uh, as a degree. So in most cases, students are responsible for sending uh, their transcripts to the college that they're attending. Uh, when it comes to AP scores, they send the AP scores to the college they're attending, and then that college will evaluate how those will transfer into their system. So um, there's kind of general crosswalks that will give you a guide on those. So if you get uh, you know, a certain score on the AP exam or the ACT, 
college can tell you exactly how that will count towards college credit for them within their program. Um, and then similarly with the dual credit, it would roll right into a particular program with themselves. So if students don't hit the milestones as far as earning the SDGEC certificate or the associate's degree, those credits usually will transfer, but then it's up to the individual college to determine how they fit within their system, within their program. So uh, if you have any more questions about the SDGEC in general, I do have some great handouts uh, outside on your way out. Feel free to come and see me. Sure, I, I always like to talk, so sure. <laughs> One thing that I think would, and maybe you can address this, Ali, because that was a very extensive answer. That was great. I think, Jonathan. Um, talk to, can you talk to us a little bit? And maybe, maybe you can. I don't know. But what's the, so we talk about the SAP, that standard, that academic progress rate, and we look at that. How does that impact students who come on campus with uh, significant amounts of dual credit? Does it impact, um, you know, whether or not they can continue to receive financial aid over time? Um, you guys have any insight into that? Um, sure, this is something that uh, we started to see more and more of, like especially the last uh, few years, um, and it's uh, it's it's really remarkable because it, as far as like college goes, you know, I think about it always from a cost uh, point of view, right? Because when you come into college with those credits, you're saving money essentially. Um, college can be expensive, but also from a standing point of view. Uh, you coming in, you don't have to take like your English, math, all of these kind of gen ed courses that you you have really required to take. So that like allow you a lot of flexibility in terms of like really like focusing in what you want to study, or maybe perhaps you want to like look into like career options. Like there is like certain things like I don't know internships uh, within the or within the college kind of things because. Then that navigates. Typically, most colleges you require you to have 120 credits. So if you're coming already with 30 credits, you're already like that's a semester. You're a semester ahead essentially, you know, or a, year, a whole year ahead essentially. So that kind of gives you that luxury of kind of being able to uh, look into you know different options in college and have a really different kind of college experience. That sort of thing. But that's the answer there. I'll add to that because the, uh, the SAP status is very important when you do arrive at college, especially uh, I counsel our dual credit students a lot. Sometimes they're like, my, my goal is just to pass this class. Uh, and I remind them that this is a part of their official college transcript. If you're taking dual credit classes, uh, that's an official college class. So it will impact uh, your financial aid and some of those aspects when you arrive at college. You don't want to transfer those credits to a college and immediately be on academic probation because your GPA uh, isn't that great. So. Uh, if you're in the dual credit programs, I encourage you to treat that just like those college classes because they are. They are college classes and you want to make sure uh, that you're not at a disadvantage. So uh, within our program, if students are earning less than a C in their dual credit classes, we encourage them to drop the dual credit. They can continue the high school credit and fulfill that piece, but we encourage them to drop the dual credit because we don't want them to get dinged for that uh, when they do transfer those credits. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we have time for, it's about 7.30, so again, we're about an hour in. We want to respect that time. Maybe one more question. Um, do you want to do that, Ms. Bates? You got that? Or I can as well. Okay, I'll ask it. So uh, switching gears one more time, and then we'll talk about the admission process a little bit, you know, what, uh, what colleges are looking for. Um, can you just talk a little bit about, um, like, what's, what's, what's scholarship? What does that look like? We talk about, again, how it, it's here at Penn High School. What does scholarship look like at, at your institutions? You know, how do students apply? You know, what kind of programs exist out there? Um, and then, you know, what kind of aid programs um, can you think of that might benefit our students? And you might want to elaborate on that. If I can just talk just a just briefly uh, in reference to, um, I, I certainly encourage you to look on the website as well in terms of scholarships, financial aid um, that are available. But with the Field Scholar Program, um, in reference to financial aid, uh, Bethel College uh, automatically, if you come into the Field Scholar Program, and you do have to be accepted as a Bethel University student first, and then you uh, apply for the uh, Field Scholar Program, and Bethel gives you a 50% discount right off the top. Um, they uh, then offer tuition assistance through uh, the employers that um, are providing assistance to the school 
as well as looking at uh, the uh, parent responsibility off the FAFSA. So that's how they put together their financial aid package. Sure. Um, so finances are kind of big. Um, before I kind of answer that question, I kind of want to actually uh, ask a question because I want to make sure someone uh, out here today is walking in with one thing and something that's really important. Um, it was mentioned earlier that something that everyone should do regardless of like their financial status or like their background what is something that everyone that is interested in college should do? FASFA, you win a prize. I, I will give it to you here. That is great. FASFA is what we like to hear because FASFA opens the doors for a lot of scholarship, finances. Uh, scholarships, free money. We like free money, right? Um, so for us, we look at, we have merit-based scholarships, which are based on GPA and your test scores. You, you get a scholarship for having a really good test score or a, a certain GPA. Uh, there is scholarship, we, for us, I use house we call them like divided by titans, titan gold, titan silver, uh, you name them. We also have scholarship that is uh, as a result of like background. We, we, as we kind of, as a public institution, we always try to increase diversity so diverse students uh, can apply for different kind of scholarships. Uh, additionally, we have scholarships that are I do, relating to whatever, whatever kind of community service that you're completing or that sort of thing. Uh, I would encourage you, like she said, again, um, kind of go on the website and look at it and just ask a lot of questions about scholarship. Hey, what kind of scholarship do you guys have available? Any college that you go to, and I'm sure you, you, you should ask more, hey, what kind of scholarship that you go to? Uh, and this process really doesn't stop because a lot of the scholarship are renewed uh, based on meeting requirements and that sort of thing, criteria every year. But also, while you're in college, there is other scholarship that you can continuously look for, that sort of thing. Uh, certainly at IU has been, we have those scholarships, such as like being a peer mentor, you know, like oftentimes we have, uh, you know, college, uh, that there are sophomores or juniors, so the upperclassmen that serve as like peer mentors to freshman students, they tend to get a scholarship for just, you know, really just um, welcoming new students and just uh, showing them the way, that sort of thing. Uh, so there is various scholarships as far as like scholarship opportunities, that sort of thing. All right, well, I think uh, again, uh, we want to respect your time. Uh, give a, a round of applause, please, for our, our panel members. We're really glad to have them here tonight. Thank you. Uh, real quick, just to kind of cap off the evening, I want to share a couple of, of resources that we have, uh, and I alluded to these earlier, just talking about our college and career uh, kind of our processes. So Mr. Sean Penny, he's the one that coordinates that, uh, you know, a lot of the scholarship opportunities that we have. Uh, he's lo located in room 115, uh, so make sure that uh, uh, you guys get to know uh, him. Uh, he's a great, a great asset for our students. Um, and then a couple of, uh, a couple of Twitter follows for you. Um, our uh, account, the scholarship account, is a great thing uh, to follow for, uh, for scholarships. We also like to put information out, uh, announcements and things like that, through our, our counseling uh, profile there, so check that one out. Uh, and then lastly, uh, what I wanted to get to, if it works. It's not going to work. Last, last slide, and it's not going to work. Oh, it did not, it is not, it's not there. Okay, so uh, I'll do this off of memory. I apologize. Uh, I wanted this, it, it was a slide, just a, an, an announcement. So the St. Joseph County College Fair is coming up. So obviously great information here tonight with, with, our, with our panel. Uh, but if you want to go and get information on um, many more colleges and start to gather um, some of that college visit material, things like that, that's coming up here. I think it's October 1st. Um, you can't see the slides at all, can you? I, what's that? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so October 1st, um, it's at the uh, Century Center in South Bend. Uh, they have a financial aid seminar starting at 530. Um, and then they have um, kind of like that open college fair 
uh, starting there, uh, I think it's at 6 o'clock thereafter, I think it goes until 7.30. So uh, another great resource for students in the county, uh, the St. Joseph County uh, Scholarship Foundation puts that on. Uh, they do a great job every year of, of getting colleges there. So again, another opportunity and resource uh, for you and your students and gathering information. Uh, that's all we have. I just want to, again, thank you so much for coming tonight. What a great, uh, a great night. Uh, if you have questions, uh, we'll be available for a short time. Uh, you can talk to our panel members individually, myself and Ms. Bates. And then again, always feel free uh, to email us, call us, uh, and we'll try to respond to your questions as soon as we can. Thank you.